So today I'm talking about the different tools, apps, and hardware I use as a software developer. I'll link to everything I mentioned in the description in case you want to check anything out for yourself. To start, the primary machine I work on is a 14-inch M3 Pro MacBook, which is where I build all of my personal projects and schoolwork. I do also use a 16-inch M1 Pro solely for my internship, but both of these M chips are incredibly performant and for web development, it's all I really need. The one regret I do have is not bumping up my RAM as oftentimes, once I've been working for a few hours, I tend to have a lot of arc tabs and other apps open that start to slow things down. Though to answer the question of why Mac, it really comes down to the fact that I've found the workflow and suite of tools and apps that helps me to code fast. So at work I use Ruby on Rails, but for all of my side projects now, I've completely migrated to using Next.js 14. I spent a bit of time learning Express.js and have been meaning to pick up Nest so that I can build proper REST APIs for my apps. But out of the box, Next.js is actually quite nice if you're building simple functionality where you might not need a separate backend API. For those of you that don't know, Next.js is a React framework with a bunch of added functionality and conventions that make things like routing or server-side rendering really easy. This makes it much better for SEO if you're building a blog, and this is why I've migrated my personal site over to Next. You can check it out down below if you want. With Next, you can choose both JavaScript and TypeScript, but I chose to just jump into TypeScript as it's become more and more popular, and I don't regret it. This just gives types to JavaScript like string, number, array, etc. that fixes a lot of the problems vanilla JavaScript has, though there are times where it makes things more annoying and frankly confusing, but overall, I I think it's worth a trade-off if you want your app to scale nicely. So aside from Next, I use Tailwind entirely to style my components as it makes building out UIs really fast. I used to hate it because of how many class names you ended up adding, but you can actually define CSS classes that apply Tailwind utility classes, and that can help to reduce how much you're actually writing. So for my package manager, I recently switched from NPM over to PNPM, and that was a great decision. PNPM, if you don't know, is built to be far more efficient and fast faster than npm, so it reduces the size of your node modules folder and makes installing packages much faster. Now, once I have an application ready to deploy, I've just been using Vercel because they built Next.js, which makes it the easiest platform to get started on. They have a pretty generous free plan if you're building personal projects, but once you start working on commercial ones, it's 20 bucks a month, which isn't too bad, but I've heard so many horror stories about this getting really expensive. Side tip if you are building a SaaS, set up a free account with Cloudflare as it'll protect your site from getting DDoSed and having any unexpected bills. I plan to host all of my Nest.js backends on Railway, which I have no experience with myself, but I've heard a lot of good things. So when writing code, I use IntelliJ for Rails and VS Code for everything else. VS Code is the editor I've become most comfortable with, and the amount of extensions available make it really nice to work in. I know a lot of you will ask what theme I use, so there's a link in the description that goes to a page with all of this info, but this one specifically is minimal from Nishabash. It's such a clean theme that paired with the glyph for VS Code icons makes my editor look great. There's tons of extensions I use for varying purposes, so I won't go through all of them, but I'll touch on the ones I get the most use out of and think will be the most applicable. Auto renaming tags is a great quality of life extension, as if you have a large block of code and want to change a div to a main tag, for example, you don't have to jump and change the other one. Prettier is a must-have as it auto-formats your code on save and ensures you have a consistent styling throughout your projects. You can set global rules across VS Code or have them per project by using a .prettierrc file. With this, you can specify plugins, which the only one I use is for Tailwind CSS, and this one automatically reorders your class name so that you have a consistent style and removes any duplicate ones that exist. Pairing it with the Tailwind IntelliSense VS Code extension, it's a powerful combo. This lets you hover over any Tailwind class and see the raw CSS styling. You probably work on a number of different projects and it can be annoying navigating to them in Finder or through the terminal, which is where the project manager extension comes in handy. I've been using this for years now and every new dev environment I set up, this is the first extension I install. What it does is let you instantly jump between any saved projects with the click of a button. You can also specify tags for each if you want to categorize them separately. If you work with a lot of APIs, having the Postman integration is super convenient and it's something I get a lot of use out of. Not having to switch to a separate app is a great development experience. Similarly, if you design your project in Figma or work on a team where you have this 
designers, the Figma extension is incredibly useful. You can of course reference any of your design files in a VS Code window, which on its own is really convenient, but if you're on a Figma paid plan, you can use the Figma to code plugins to instantly copy and paste the HTML and CSS code. This massively speeds up the process of building out your UI. Of course, sometimes you'll have to make changes, but it's still super powerful. The plan is structured for teams, but if it's just you, it's 15 bucks a month, which I personally think is more than worth it for the time you save. Plus, you also get unlimited design files and projects. So I've implemented three AI tools into my workflow, these being Copilot, Perplexity, and ChatGPT. I want to preface this by saying you shouldn't be letting AI write everything for you because you won't learn anything for one, but it can also be completely wrong a lot of the times. But if you understand how to use it, it can be really helpful to speed up your workflow. Copilot is integrated straight into VS Code, and I find this most helpful to complete repetitive code and generate simple functions. Perplexity is the tool I trust the most because it primarily answers your question using search results, which significantly reduces the amount of hallucinations. Lastly, ChatGPT has been a tool that I use on and off in my dev workflow, but right now I'm finding it really useful for ideation. What I mean by that is I use it to walk through ideas for projects and even domain names. A little side tangent from that, oneword.domains is a great website to pair with this if you're trying to come up with a short and memorable name for your business or side project. It lets you filter by tons of different top-level domains, as well as things like popularity, name length, words to be included, and a ton more. The free site is pretty limited, but as a one-time payment of $150, if you're someone who builds a ton of side projects, I actually think it's worth it. I've used it to find a few really good domains recently, so I have no complaints. Now, for my terminal, I switched over from iTerm2 to Warp a few months back, and I've loved it. The biggest selling point is the built-in AI chat, which is incredibly helpful if you forget commands, but what I find more useful is auto-completions. This makes navigating through files and completing commands so much faster. If you want to customize the look, you can head to their GitHub where they have a bunch of themes you can download, my favorite of which being Warp Dark. After setting that up, I found out that you can set a hotkey to instantly open a terminal window pinned to your screen, and this has been game changing. This is available in iTerm, but since finding out about this, I've not used a separate terminal window once. For my browser, I use Arc and have been now for almost six months. It's built with Chromium under the hood, so any Chrome extension will work just fine, but for me, the sidebar layout is what made me switch. You can close it up when not in use and have a much cleaner looking browser window. You can also separate spaces that have different bookmarks and save logins for each, which is very useful if you want to separate work and personal things. Lastly, Arc has some AI features built in, one of which I've been getting a lot of use out of is 5 second previews, which lets you hover over a link and quickly summarize the page. Now, the last app I think worth mentioning is Raycast. At first, this just seems like a hyped up spotlight replacement, but as you use it more and more, it becomes incredibly useful. It can do currency and time zone calculations instantly, and allow you to quickly activate system commands like changing your output device. There's also snippets, which lets you create quick text replacements for text you repeatedly type, and clipboard history. The latter has been something I use a ton throughout the day while coding, as I'll often copy multiple pieces of text from a single page of documentation, which saves me from having to jump back and forth. Apart from these built-in functionalities, extensions allow you to integrate Raycast with a ton of different tools. The one I get the most use out of is Spotify to quickly change my song, and Tailwind CSS to quickly look up class names. Now, for hardware, I code on a single 38-inch ultrawide from LG, which I just upgraded to from dual 34 inches, and it's a decision I wish I made sooner. The extra screen real estate from 34 is noticeable when working with multiple tabs, and a single monitor is just a lot cleaner. I've bought a stand for my Mac from Rain Design that props it up to serve as an additional display if needed, and this for me has been perfect. Because I work up until late at night, the BenQ screen bar halo on top lights up the surface so I can still clearly see anything on top of my desk. For my keyboard, I'm currently using the MX Keys Mini from Logitech, and I don't know what it is, but something about this low-profile design is really nice. I pair this with the MX Anywhere 3S also from Logitech, and really the only reason I use this is because my MX Master has gotten to a point where the lag makes it completely unusable. For audio, I switch between my Audio Engine HD3 speakers and Bear Dynamic DT990 headphones depending on how 
how I feel. These speakers are a follow up to the A2 Pluses, which I used for years and thoroughly enjoyed. The bass on them isn't great, but otherwise they sound clear and are a pair I can definitely recommend. This video got too long, but I wanted to list some helpful resources that I've used to learn, along with some other tools and services for development. I threw all of that onto a page on my website, so you can click the link in the description if you want to go check that out. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next, where I talk more about how I set up my Mac for development. I'll see you there. Take care.